Good evening, everyone. Uh, last session, I'll not, I hope to keep it on time. Um, Omni channel, as we speak, um, is a great strategy. Um, we have consumers at the center whenever consumers uh, are at the core of any strategic decision. Uh, it always yields significant quantum of uh, positive outcomes. Um, here, is a, uh, here is a strategic intervention, uh, a strategic way of working where we are talking about that every consumer seamlessly will be engaged by brands uh, with relevant pieces of content um, crafted for every touch point and consistent enough every time when they engage with you. Now, because there is an angle of relevance, there is an angle of consistency, there is an angle of seamlessness, uh, it's imperative, it's an imperative that it's likely to have significant effect when it comes to brand building, when it comes to commercial outcomes. Uh, some of these stats actually uh, portray the same. And if you see, it's about shoppers coming back more number of times, average build values being higher. There's a lot of advocacy that keeps getting built uh, when it comes to an omni-channel way of working, uh, as well as propensity for a consumer to get retained and hence an angle of loyalty. Uh, and that's with this entire spaghetti loop-like consumer journeys. Um, when you are trying to engage with them at every touch point in the journey, uh, it's likely that you are going to build a stronger brand, a lot more brand love with the way that you are going to work. But having said that, as an FMCG brand, not like a retailer who has an end-to-end -end view of the consumer, but when you are an FMCG brand like ours, is it really an easy task when it comes to creating an omni-channel kind of a strategy? It's great on a theory. It's great to talk about it, that it creates a lot of effect, a lot of impact, a lot of efficiency in the way you're working, and so on. But is it really, really an uh, easy way of dealing with it? So if you look at the entire consumer journey today, and, and I was talking about the spaghetti loop kind of a consumer journey, there is an enormous number of journey pieces that we are aware of today that keeps happening. Right? Uh, but keep to the ability to really create an impact and being able to attribute each of these in investments that you do, the engagements that you do with your consumers is not really very easy, especially when there are broken links. Uh, as a brand owner, you have an ability to influence and also uh, harness information data to influence further is not always seamless as the word omni channel talks about it talks about being a seamless uh, consumer journey so at itc we have actually imbibed the concept of omni channel in various places we have looked at from a omni channel way of inciting we have looked at it from a consumer um, care and consumer interaction perspective of course commerce and content and brand building. I'll be touching upon a few aspects today in our discussion. To begin with uh, is all about inciting. Now, if I don't understand the consumers, of course, this entire consumer journey, the omni-channel conversations that we are having is futile. So other than the overall traditional way of understanding consumers, there are a plethora of streams of information that are coming into any organization for it, for that matter, for any brand. It's about how do we synthesize that and how do we utilize that further in order to take those real important decisions in order to impact the consumer and hence your business through that journey. So just to exemplify that, if you look at it, I just put down some six or seven such um, sources. If you look at towards your left, those are the kind of uh, your own digital assets, your own D2Cs. So they're all internal data sets, very, very structured, consumer ID led, BII data led, and so on and so forth. If you look at the third and the fourth bucket, they're quite, so it, it's crawler based data. You are engaging with organizations who are being able to service your requirements in terms of purchase journey, journeys on different e-com platforms that are happening. And I'm saying end-to-end -end consumer journeys that are happening on various e-com platforms. But the external data sets, extremely unstructured, aggregated form 
of information and, and, and data sets. Whereas if you look at the last three, they're both online as well as offline data sets. Again, extremely unstructured. The so social conversations, all of us probably are now listening to consumers on social platforms uh, at, at a day basis, at an hour basis to understand and take decisions. But most of these, again, become very aggregated and unstructured. So the question is that, if, is this really an omni-channel way of understanding consumers? You have a multitude of sources coming to you, but really is it an omni-channel way of understanding consumers? So what happens at our case is that you build insights. Many of these insights get validated, revalidated, fine-tuned when you marry all of these. For example, you will probably see that average consumption of sugar is going down per household per month. And that's a purchase panel data. You will look at and say from e-commerce data that are there certain categories in which zero sugar, no sugar, no added sugar uh, formats are growing or not. You will listen to consumers for social listening and see what are they talking about from a diabetes standpoint. Um, is it a life stage uh, or is it cutting across life stage where this is happening? So you validate few things. For example, is jaggery really growing? And then you will marry them to see that what kind of new product development are you going to embark upon, what kind of content strategy are you going to embark upon, and so on and so forth. So yes, it is becoming a singular place through multitude of touch points, but still not truly an omni-channel way of inciting. It, it, it's, a, it's a really difficult task to do that. But having said that, let's look at these three buckets. Um, commerce, uh, the content ecosystem, uh, and of course, when you're doing all of that, you need to look at personalization at scale. So we'll first marry commerce and personalization and then content and personalization and take two examples to exemplify from an omni-channel perspective as an FMCG brand, how do you want to take this and how we are taking this forward. So the first one, when you look at it, it's commerce and personalization and uh, ITC store is an example here to, accept, to explain this point of view. So when you look at ITC store, which is uh, a D2C platform that we have, um, there are multitude of touch points for ITC store. Of course, you have your own website, which is your ITC store.in. You have ITC store as a seller on ONDC today. You have ITC store as a seller on your 3P platforms like Amazon and Flipkart. You have ITC store as an extension out from your brand site. So an Ashirvad or a, or a Bingo or um, or Dermafeek will have uh, extended out um, towards idcstore.in. And then as, as situations prevail, you will also have a physical touch point like ITC store on wheels. Now all these uh, data set, all these um, uh, touch points for a shopper with respect to ITC and its brands would send enough number of signals which we would harness, let's say that out middle ring that you're calling as customer data hub. And you will reutilize these in order to achieve your acquisitions, retention, experience, uh, you're engaging your consumers, and even to the extent of building loyalty with the consumer. So let's try and understand this a bit. For example, when it comes to acquisition, when people have visited a brand site uh, and they have consumed content on the site, you have been able to harness a lot of high intent consumer audiences. You have looked and you've segmented these consumers. So for example, home bakers, this is our first party data, we would have segmented them into seven segments or eight segments. Each segment has some demographic variables, it has deterministic variables and probabilistic variables which you would take. And then finally craft personalized communication in order to acquire consumers for IDC store. Right? So, so you've utilized your existing data sets in order to acquire further consumer bases. You would use tools, and these are just tools today, there is something called Use Insider tomorrow, it will be something else. You will use them to finally get consumers, and when the consumer journey starts, and, it, and there are few who would add items to the cart, there are few people who would just browse and leave. You will then again craft content, etc., and and try to target them and so on and so forth through the funnel right till the end where you have been able to um, create meaningful conversations with shoppers 
at different touch points, but absolutely seamless. So that the experiences are uh, such that they do not at any point in time feel that it's a off-platform or an on-platform personalization that is, that is at play. <clears throat> of course, needless to say that there are personalizations that happens. You use a lot of DCO um, uh, in order to arrive at the right set of content which is working for you, vernaculars, or personalization by category and they end up, and we've all seen they end up uh, showing better conversions. And these are far, far few more examples on that. Or when people visit your website, so when they come to engage and there is something called an engage fragrance finder and they've shown you their preferences towards a particular kind of fragrance. Or they've come to a site called uh, Happy Tummy and they've talked about their digestive health. These further develops and helps you develop further content which you would later utilize to craft content personalized, bringing them or drawing them back to ITC store. So this is how you would be utilizing your entire content ecosystem and of course loyalty program which pans across hotels, ITC store today and will further get expanded um, to all our brand sites going forward. So loyalty also becomes a single source from where you will be able to uh, generate a seamless engagement for your consumer base. Moving on, this is on ONDC. So you will try to provide for a similar experience for your ITC shoppers, whether it is on ONDC <coughs> or on platforms like Amazon and Flipkart, while each of these play very different roles. For example, when you are on, uh, as a seller on Amazon or Flipkart, the core aim is to promote your long tails. Uh, pro core aim is to build relevant baskets, control discounting, etc. But the way your ITC store is playing a role there is a very different role, but very similar in terms of experiences that you provide for. <clears throat> Moving on, this is ITC store on wheels. We started this during COVID when we ensured that consumers can access their favorite brands at their doorsteps. Today, the same mechanism is used in order to promote long tails as well as new launches and so on and so forth. Uh, moving on, uh, when we are looking at from, and I'm taking an example of Ashivad multi-grade ecosystem, the content ecosystem and personalization. The first step obviously is to understand consumers, personas, etc. and etc. But coming to multi-grade, uh, multi-grade of course is positioned around the space of digestive health and it cuts across life stages. And the idea was to create a thought leadership in this space. And hence, what we designed was a common currency. Uh, called digestive quotient and a lot of con content assets around it. This digestive quotient was nothing other than a, a kind of a survey on the site by which you will be able to uh, give us information which through which we will be able to craft uh, relevant communication, relevant solves for you. The usual sets whether it's ad campaigns, influencers, etc. were used to drive traffic to happy tummy. Uh, and Happy Tummy is the platform where um, we had digestive quotient as a test. The, the, there were multiple ways in which we wanted to engage with the consumers uh, through this. So it's multiple sources from where you would bring traffic here and you will have multiple routes to further engage with the consumers. So to bring this alive and this is the uh, a kind of an omni-channel experience that we provided for whether it's content here, whether it is content and advertisement whether it's your packs which carry digestive quotient uh, as something that you would, as a QR code, you will scan, you will, you will bring traffic here, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so at every touch point that you had, you created uh, a, a reason why people should come to Happy Tummy and engage uh, on this area of digestive quotient. Now basis this, and, and these, these exemplify them further, Basis this, you would, and this is just one example at bottom funnel. Uh, basis this, you would, for, you'll get a score. As you get a score, you get a WhatsApp message giving you a discount coupon, taking you down into the funnel for a conversion. Uh, and so this is the entire omni-channel uh, perspective that we are bringing in when it comes to DQ. So again, very, very complex. Uh, DQ on, as a, a DQ is a happy tummy website 
we talked about all of these. There are there are information bases which moves out from the Happy Tummy website. There are information sets that are coming in. You're triggering experiences through this uh, set of uh, activities that you are doing. Now, while you are creating content, you are also creating content keeping those consumer segments in mind. So, for example, you have a sedentary lifestyle versus people who are really proactive in health. And then, hence, you have created content differently for different life stages uh, or, or, or cohorts of consumers. And then, for example, an active health seeker will see this content. And these segments were created, this is your first party data as well as what is available as segments on your third party platforms. They will be, there will be a chunk of consumers who would still avoid watching your content. You will take them, you will exclude them and you will show them the next content piece and so on and so forth. Then move them into the consideration bucket and then finally into the purchase intent bucket. So, so that's the uh, campaign funnel that you would be constructing. And not only that, you will be creating very, very curated um, landing pages so that if somebody has seen a sedentary lifestyle content when they land, they actually see a con landing page which is curated for somebody who is meant for this sedentary lifestyle. Signals from there move into creating something called what we call as high quality traffic, which is based on time spent, scroll depth, etc. Uh, and this is the high quality traffic uh, which we pick up for further retargeting of consumers and shoppers. <clears throat> now when, when people were on your platform, they shared information about their digestive health. You would take up those pieces of information and say there is a chunk of people who consume less fruit or they are facing stress or they are drinking less water. So even there, the relevant conversations and communication that you are doing is basis pieces of information they are sharing with you. Hence trying to make it as seamless as it can because at every touch point you are making it extremely relevant for the consumers to engage with your brand and you are building your happy tummy and your Ashivad multigrain through that process. We've also built a community around it on Facebook and today we have around 9,000 odd uh, people on the community uh, on, on so uh, who are engaging on different content, different kind of conversations with respect to digestion and gut health. All these of course are powered by a central um, data hub, your first party data hub. Um, and we know what is, what is happening around uh, in, with respect to cookies and so on and so forth. And this is becoming increasingly important to provide for an omni-channel experience to consumers. And, uh, so, but to make this happen, there is one more enabler beyond the tech stack, etc. is to create a content factory because if you go to a creative agency, all that they want is to create hero content. Nobody really wants to create content for your website, content for, um, uh, for your personalization content, etc. So it was important for us to construct this content uh, to enable content at scale a concept called the content factory. The other enabler hence is this entire touch point ecosystem. So we had designed this when we embarked upon the journey of creating a unified consumer experience as a thought or omni-channel kind of a thought. Uh, this is an IDC food portal um, which, is, which is all about food and content related to that there is nothing branded about it. There is not a single ITC brand in this. Today there is a community on that called uh, Foodies Only on Facebook. Um, your food portal is about to get launched. This is the customer data hub or your first party uh, data center or the nerve center. There are brand sites, ITC store and other D2C ITC store here is just representing uh, the D2C of ITC. And all of these of course powered by Adobe. But the idea behind this is that without this construct, it is very difficult for us to really provide for this uniform, omni-channel, consistent, relevant uh, approach towards building brands. Thank you.